What up guys, back here with another Defender of the Crown video, this one for the original Macintosh. I'm going to apologize in advance for my scratchy voice, they seem to be, I don't know if it's a cold or what, but I sound a little bit weird today. Um, the Macintosh was the most difficult thing to figure out how to run on a modern PC. I ended up having to have two different Macintosh emulators one to decompress the file that was Defender of the Crown, and then the other to actually run it because it won't run in, I think, it's either System 7 or System 8 or later, I guess OS 8 or later, um, but I needed OS 8 to decompress it, and then this system is running, it's either 6 or 7. It's, I'm not, I was never much of a Mac user back in the day. I think some of our school computers or Macs, but I never had one at home. So anyway, I finally got it to run. And it was actually a very pleasant surprise. So being that it's black and white, the graphics are actually pretty cool. I, I like what they did here. And the music, I think the music is passable, it's good. The only thing I've noticed is that the music it kind of like starts and stops, so I'm guessing that it takes a lot of the CPU processing power or something, because it you'll notice later that if something happens or needs to load a new thing, the music will stop. You can also skip the cutscenes, which is nice. You know I'm a big fan of that. You can see when I when I click, it like pauses the music to load the next screen and then it resumes. Okay, completely new artwork for the four characters. Um, surprisingly, the one that I do the best with is Joffrey, and I'll show you how I play Joffrey. Hopefully this will work. Uh, some other differences right away. Um, Instead of having a word describing how your different stats are, we actually have the numbers. It makes me suspect that the other games had numbers, but they were hidden. And that, say, sword play is 9, so it'd be strong. If somehow your sword play went down by 1, which never happens, it would probably still say strong, because 8 and 9 are about the same. Um... So I think in the other games sometimes I was like, oh, I thought my leadership would go up, or I thought my leadership would go down. I think it was going down, but not enough to change from strong to good, or from good to average. Um, notice we start with seven people in our home army and 15 people in our campaign army. That's pretty strange, and we have no starting money other than our first turn's worth of income. Here's our map. Not my favorite place to start, but we'll see if we can make it work. It's funny, I think this has changed over the course of all these different versions I've played. Because I think this used to be my favorite place to start, and it's it's not anymore. My, fa my favorite place to start is here, because this territory is obscenely powerful. Lots of people, lots of income. Anyway, move army. <clears throat> Of course, we don't have different colors, so we just have different patterns. It can get a little bit confusing sometimes, because these two guys are dots. Oh, wow. This is very early in the game for this to happen, but I'm going to do it. Um, and you're going to see why I choose Joffrey. The sword play is almost playable. So my main strategy is going to be somehow kill this first guy. You can actually sort of block by moving your mouse down, which is kind of cool. And then the only thing that's kind of annoying is to actually stab 
you have to kind of like press the, lo the mouse like long, like you really got to push on it. You can't just tap on it. Now, this is why the sword play is a little bit busted. This guy can't hit me when we're on the stairs. I have a hard time hitting him. There we go. If I find the right place to stand, I can hit him. He can't hit me. I know it's kind of cheap, but it makes this game actually a lot more playable and a lot more fun. And then I do like the fact that I actually move pretty quickly. remember this song being in the other games. This is kind of cool. It's kind of interesting. And then watch this. This is one of the more risque versions I've seen. I think more so even than the Commodore 64 one. I think it's pretty interesting with the artwork they're able to do. These are, I mean, they're pixels. There's some cross hatching, some just straight up dots. But it's amazing the kind of the depth they're allowed to get out of the artwork. And yep, we even get a little bit of butt crack there. So that's, I think it's even more than a Commodore 64 if I remember right. This is going to change how I play because I wasn't expecting to get that many lands that early. from vassals. So in this version, the vassals just stay in that territory. And they appear to actually defend it, but they don't do a field battle for them. Um, i move here. See if I can steal. Yep, I get to steal these guys. And then I think I'm going to take this territory. And then that should conclude the territory grab portion of the game. I got three nights for free. Okay. I may have made some error here. This is what I want to do. These Norman lords have never taken a turn to buy soldiers because they're following the same rules that I am. Meaning that this guy in particular has had, what are we on turn four? Quite a few turns to build up money. So a little bit risky, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to raid this guy. And I'm hoping I get somewhere around 30 or 40 gold. So this is why I play Joffrey. I 
And again, this is almost fun. I don't know why I'm having such a hard time hitting this guy this time. Come on. Alright. And then I just gotta force this next guy onto the stairs and then I'll win. probably insert a meme about Anakin Skywalker and having the high ground, but... Guess that makes me Obi-Wan Kenobi. I love the body slides down the stairs after he dies. Okay, 51 gold. So if I survive this turn, because I only have one person in my home castle, Now, the one thing that caught me by surprise is you can't move your army and then buy soldiers the same turn. If you start Seek Conquest and then click Continue, it actually ends your turn, which, as far as I know, is unique to this game. I was worried about getting my soldiers home so I could defend my castle, but actually, I'm just going to go ahead and buy some soldiers with all that money I just got. I'm going to go half and half, so I'm going to take my gold, split it in half, 40. That gives me five knights. No, actually, I should do thirds because I need some catapults, too. Let's do some catapults. We'll do that many knights and then that many soldiers. Okay, now my home castle should be pretty well defended. This happens in this version sometimes, where they defeat each other and leave a territory neutral. Okay. And then I'm also paying attention to who... who just moved their army, because that means they weren't able to spend their money. And then this guy probably has a lot of money. So I'm going to go raid that guy again. I actually think getting a maiden that early in the game might have hampered me a little bit. Because I actually kind of count on my um, allied players to kind of run interference for me in the early game keep the Normans off my back while I raid them and take all their gold. Come on. I don't know. Sometimes, I don't know if you, there's like a blocking animation or what, but... I know I can kind of block, but it's sort of like a quick little block. If I catch him right here, I can finish him off real quick. And his body slides down the stairs. 46 gold. Okay, what I want to do is reconnect. Yeah, I was worried about that. I need to reconnect my campaign army to my home garrison. So I'm going to go ahead and see. We know this territory is important, but I need to get home. Let's see. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take this one first. I'm not sure if I'm making the best choices this game. Not a lot to say about the field battle screen. Okay. And we have the joust. Uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and go for fame. 
because Joffrey needs a bit of a leadership bonus. I don't remember who's good at what, so I'm just going to choose. We'll start with Wilfred, I guess. And I'm going to do fame, and then this joust is actually pretty fun. The lance bounces up and down about three times. Right in there on the third time, you press the button. If it flashes, then you won the game. I think this is actually like one of my favorite joust mini games. And it explicitly tells you you have won a leadership point. So if we look at my status screen, my leadership will have gone up by one. Okay, come on. Alright, so that bounces a couple times. And then I want it to come up. Oop. I don't know about that, let's see. Nope. So I just lost the leadership I just gained. But I don't feel like that was unfair. I didn't pull the lance up at the right time. There's been a couple of versions of this game where I actually enjoy the <laughs> Stole one piece of gold. There's a couple of versions of the game where I actually enjoy the jousting, and this has probably been my favorite. Okay, I am going to... Like I said, I want to connect back up with my main army, so I'm going to keep going. Hopefully I don't get raided this turn. Joffrey's poor leadership doesn't seem to be too big of a problem in this. Yeah, I was worried about that. Now it's just me versus three enemies. Okay. I have to buy some more soldiers. Do five more knights. Get some soldiers. It's going to take me at least two turns. I'm going to go after that dark guy's home castle. I got three more knights for free. That's pretty fun. Alright, and then I... I kind of wonder if this is stupid, but I feel like I should raid him for money. It probably is a stupid idea. I think I need to just go fight him. Because he's just become a behemoth. And I just made a really bad mistake because I forgot what version of this game I'm playing because I moved my army and now my turn's going to end. I was supposed to buy my army that turn. Yeah. Now they're raiding me. <laughs> Good thing I don't have any money. Well, I am going to actually go here. Defeat this little garrison. And then I'm going to hope that dark guy moves somewhere. I don't know who Reginald is. I don't have much of land left. Yeah, I might have mess really messed up when I screwed up that one turn. Because um, I'm going to have to... If this guy just bought more soldiers, then that's the end of me. Yeah, we'll see. And actually, if I do win, no enemies will have access to my home castle. So I'm going to just empty it out, except for maybe one. Grab all my knights, grab all my... <laughs> one catapult. 
Uh, this version you can move four times before your turn is over. I have to use Robin Hood. And then... I do like how they got really original with this. That's a cool picture. Um, I see how this goes. I'm either one. I'm either gonna win or lose this this turn. Robin's gonna be five extra men. That's hopefully a good sign. In the Atari ST game, when I was playing, I said that the amount of men that Robin gives you is sort of based on how many defenders there are. The Atari ST version proved I was wrong, but so far in my experience, that's been true. So if I have about a hundred guys, I should be able to take all this guy's land. So let's see. Okay. I should be able to win. Now, I also really like this siege game. And the reason for that is you get eight days and only six boulders. So it absolutely encourages you to use the Greek fire and disease because you have to. Um, the other versions, I usually just use the boulders because I want to get the castle strength down as much as I can. So I'm going to try to... I'm going to knock two holes in the wall if I can. And then this is like the other games. If you get the hang of it, it's not that hard. Okay, I'm going to throw disease in, so 45, 4. And you can see now there are only 30 and 4. So that helps quite a bit. And just like the other versions of the game, I'm looking for specific sort of benchmarks down in the pixel graphics down here. And that helps me aim better. I don't know about that one. Okay, I got it. Looks like I might have gotten all of them. Nice. And then I still have one turn left. So I got the whole wall down to 30, which is as low as you can get it. And I get to still launch some Greek fire at them, which is pretty fun. Alright, I don't think, and none of these other strategies have ever really done much for me, so I just do stand and fight every game. Okay, I may have turned this game around here. Alright. Lose Yorkshire. Oh well. Sorry, Yorkshire. Okay, now, definitely have to take this guy out because he's next to my home, which is pretty well undefended. So I'm just going to keep going. Take the momentum. At the very least, I know his field army is up here. So yeah, there's that weird stutter thing with the music. I'm not familiar with the Macs. I'm assuming there's something going on with they can't process new things while the music is going or something. Alright, I'm facing about the same odds. So I just need to not mess up this siege battle. I lost a couple guys, and these guys seem to have a few fewer people too. Let's lob some disease in here while we can. Yep, nice. Very nice. There are actually um, different castle patterns, and they don't know that they really affect um, the siege or anything, but they look different. It's kind of cool. Alright. Apparently I got good at this. 
So let's lob some Greek fire in just to cap it off. They were down to 28 because of the disease and Greek fire. So yeah, Joffrey might have not great leadership, but can I overcome that pretty easily? just by having superior numbers. All right. I think... I don't know how many soldiers this guy has, but it might be worth trying to put down his field army for good. So I'm going to go ahead and try. My question is, shall I use Robin Hood? And I think I will. When I get to the final castle, I should have superior numbers. But I want to make sure his field army is neutralized. And I don't know if that's 10 people running around, or 50, or 100. I forgot if there's spies in this game. Some versions of this game have spies. I never used them. But I've already started this, so I don't think... I can't go back. Okay, okay. You can skip the cutscenes, but you have to let the music start and then stop. Alright, so hopefully... Okay, looks like it's not too bad. Yeah, okay. Wasted my Robin Hood, but I wasn't taking chances. Okay. And then here I have to start getting careful because if my money gets too ridiculous, that guy can raid me and take half my money, and now that's soldiers in his pocket, so... And then let's see, if I buy soldiers this turn, I can get up here, let's see, one, two, three, transfer the soldiers, and then I guess I might as well take the neutral territory? No, because I need one, two, three to get back down to an enemy territory. Anyway, I'm going to buy soldiers. I'm going to split it three ways this time, so... Uh, 40 each. I'll do three catapults. Five knights. Yeah, and then the rest will be soldiers, because... Like in the other version, soldiers are basically your hit points. Even though I'm going to go heavy on the catapults. Oh, okay. Even though I'm going to go heavy on the catapults, I still won't use the bombard strategy because, as far as I can tell, it doesn't do that much in this version. It's better just to keep fighting, standing, stand and fight is your strategy in this game. Okay, so this changes... I can keep my home garrison pretty sparse, I think. And I'm going to go ahead and take that neutral territory after all, because I can get from here one, two, three, and hit that one still. Next turn, that is. And then I can see where his field army is. Oops, oops. Oh, man. I did not mean to do that. That was a complete waste of a turn and money, because... Um, I think this game eliminates the other players who are gone. Yeah. So watch where you're clicking, apparently. I'll just do fame, because I won't leave more leadership anyway. A little high. I think the sound it makes is an indication of whether you want or not. Oh, that was annoying. Watch where you click. That's my lesson.
Okay. Ugh. All right. I have a lot of money, but I need to go smash his field army again. quick. Yes, my coffers are bulging. Currently I need to, well, smash this field army because I don't like that it keeps heading up towards my home. Then I think I'm just going to have to try cutting them off down there. So I'm going to go ahead and take that castle. Don't like the fact I have 218 gold though. Let's see if I did one, two, three, four. Okay, I'm going to buy soldiers this turn and then I'm going to take that castle and then go for it. So I'll do about five of these, ten of these, okay, and that territory can't attack my home castle, so... Let's go ahead and make a ridiculously big army. I'm going to leave a few troops behind. Just because... I'm going to play a little bit safe and if he somehow breaks through and gets to my home castle before I can stop him somehow. Like I clicked on the wrong thing again. But I am heading towards this home castle. I'm gonna finish this game. All right. Let's try to do this quick. There's only 13 guys here anyway. start the siege or start the battle early so that was a weird graphical thing curious what he's gonna do he did not move his field army so he probably bought more soldiers I have a pretty strong army so I probably will win the game Let's go ahead and try. I can't even remember what version of the game it was. It was the DOS maybe, where it was at this point of the game, but I could not defeat that remaining castle. Yeah, I should be okay. I'll be able to get this number down with disease and Greek fire, and I still have three times as many knights. Strangely, it doesn't show you how many catapults you have in the field battle version, in, the, in this field battle. I don't know why that is. Anecdotally, it seems like I do more damage if I have catapults, like, active in my army. But the bombard skill doesn't seem to do that much more, so I don't know. <laughs> I love that. I got a little distracted there, but I love how the, the 
folder just kind of goes swonk. <laughs> it just kind of misses. Oh, I'm really distracted. I forgot to throw the disease in. Let's do that now before I forget. Earlier you throw the disease in, the more it actually does. Okay. So... If I'd been paying better attention, hopefully I still win. I do have far superior knights and outnumber them two to one soldiers. Looks like it's going well. Yep. Alright, same story as always. This one has the crowning scene for the final cutscene. And would you like to play again? I'll just leave it here. So my final thoughts, I really like this version of the game. Um, when I saw that it was in black and white, I was like, what? This is not going to be good. And yet, uh, I really like what they did with the graphics. Most of the other ports basically just took the Amiga graphics and then lost colors. Um, I like how in this version they had to redo the graphics completely because it wouldn't have worked. You can't you can't just port those graphics over. So whoever did the artwork in this game, I think they did a wonderful job. Uh, the sound is meh. The sound effects are sparse, but they work. The music, it's good music, but it has that weird stutter stop thing where it loads a new screen, it's got to stop and then resume the music. Um, but it's fine, doesn't bother me much. Where this version of the game shines, I think, is in the gameplay. Um, took me a couple playthroughs to get the quirks of this version down, but the sword play, I actually somewhat enjoy it. The controls are still a little stiff with the stabbing. And then it's kind of cheap that I can kill him on the stairs, but at least I can win. Uh, the joust is outright fun. Um, the catapult, I mean, it's the same game, the same in most games. And then the, the strategy aspects, the taking over different territories, all that sort of stuff. It's really well done. Um, one thing that didn't happen in this game, I think is really cool the Saxon ally players will not fight you. They will not backstab you for the first half of the game. They will actually be helpful allies. They will fight the Normans. Once you've defeated two of the Normans, the Saxons will turn on you. And like I said in other versions of this game, I like it when the AI makes sense. The Saxons want to defeat the Normans. Once two out of the three Normans are defeated, now they're ready to fight over who gets to be king. That makes logical sense, and I love it. So, final thoughts. I love this version of the game. I think it was actually worth... I think it took me a full day to figure out how to actually play this game on a modern PC, of downloading all these different things. Um... It was worth it. I really did enjoy this game. Um, getting close to wrapping up the original kind of what I would call the retro run of this game. Um, I am going to be looking at the Amstrad and Spectrum versions as well, because at least they were contemporary. Um, Spectrum one has a really weird history to it, and I can't really solve it all, but that'll be for that video. And then the Amstrad, I'm not familiar with at all, but it sounds like they got a port. Um, so I'd like to check that out as well. Anyway, hope you're enjoying this really random deep dive series into Defender of the Crown. And I'll see you next time.